Hello and welcome. My name is Larry Bodine and I'm a writer for the blog for Arizona. And we're privileged today to bring you this interview with Allison Jones, the chair of the Pima County Democratic Party. Allison, how are you today? I'm doing great, Larry. Thank you for inviting me. All right. So tell us, what are some of the things that the Pima County Democratic Party is doing that you would like everybody to know about? Well, there is a lot going on. Obviously, we just got out of an exciting primary election. And now that we have our nominees, we're in full, full voter engagement mode. And our, our candidates, of course, are doing the work they need to do. What I'm really concentrating on is raising money to give to our LDs, our legislative districts, to get out the vote for the candidates. Um, they need money to print literature and slate cards, and, and they will be sending those out shortly before the, the general election ballots drop. And uh, then we're gonna be following up with ballot chasing right away. But right. money is the big thing for us right now. I think it is Pima County Democratic Party's duty to make sure our LDs have the resources to engage with voters. Now, I understand this is kind of a reversal that in the past, the county party would ask the LDs for money, but you've completely turned that around. Tell me about that. Well, yeah, um, you know, first of all, I want to say that a Pima County Democratic Party doesn't get any money from the DNC. Um, we, we are strictly funded by our own fundraising efforts. You know, I'm a volunteer. Almost everybody except our executive director is a volunteer. So it's pretty much a grassroots effort, even though we are a county political committee. So yes, uh, in the past, in order to keep our headquarters running and our executive director paid and pay our utilities and do all that, we did ask LDs for money. I really felt the money was flowing the wrong way there and that money should flow uphill in, in, the, in the party structure down to the LDs and then flow out toward the voters. If we're all about electing Democrats, then we need to engage with voters. That is our primary directive, and that's how the money, the money expenses should be, reflect that. Yeah, well, speaking as a precinct committee man in uh, LD9, you know, I, I totally appreciate that. You know, I've been busy on Facebook, writing postcards, writing letters, uh, sending emails, uh, sending tweets, and you know, updating uh, the Democrats of Greater Tucson website, you know, uh, the support is, is totally appreciated by all the PCs. Allison, what can you tell me about what the Pima County Democratic Party is doing to get out the vote? Thanks, Larry. In addition to uh, the money that we are giving the LDs for voter engagement, we are planning on a, a social media campaign. Um, we are going to be doing some at length interview, talk show style interviews with some of the candidates, particularly the county level candidates. Uh, and I'm gonna urge the LDs to do their legislative district candidates in a similar way. We had some really good success in the primary with our debates and got huge hits on there. So a huge number of hits on those posts. So we think we can carry that through to the general and make social media work for us. Yeah, it's an online world. Uh, all, all, everybody's meeting on Zoom. Everything's happening online. Yeah. Is there one technique in particular that you think is more effective than others? I have a, an incredible social media team of three people, one of whom has an advanced degree, believe it or not, in political messaging and so, social media. Our social media is incredibly strong. We get a lot more hits than the Maricopa Democratic Party and uh, per capita way more than the Arizona Democratic Party. So whatever they're doing seems to be working. You do, it is a lot of work. You have to keep fresh content on the page. I know that. So you just can't do one post a day and feel like you're engaging with people. It's an ongoing labor intensive effort. 
we're very fortunate to have good people on that. Well, that's awesome. So what about the challenges? What are some upcoming challenges, uh, you know, such as uh, independent redistricting and the census? What are some challenges that uh, Democrats face now, particularly the county party? I keep coming back to fundraising and I don't want to I don't want to belabor that point too much, but a former county chair, Paul Eckerstrom, told me when I was running for the position, Allison, you realize you're just a fundraiser, right? And, and that's proven to be true. But besides that, we do have some challenges. Uh, independent redistricting is going to be uh, critical in uh, maintaining uh, democratic strength in this state. We will probably get one new uh, legislative, well, congressional district. And um, we need to make sure that we have a fair outcome from redistricting. I have um, recommended four excellent candidates for the commission. Um, I'm, I'm certain that we have some good people uh, to fill the two democratic slots that will be on that commission. And we've just got to really be diligent in following the process, going to the uh, comment, participating in the comment period, and going to the meetings that are related to independent redistricting. And then feeding into redistricting, of course, is census. Yeah. Uh, the, the census determines if you will even get that extra seat. And that is critical. I have to admit, the county party has played just a very minor role in that, encouraging people to participate. We're going to have to do more on that. Finally, the post office issues that oh. we're dealing with now, that's gonna be a big challenge. And we are still grappling with how we're going, what our message will be on that. I do know this for sure. We're going to tell people, get your ballot, fill it out, return it immediately. Right. Of course, there are always the procrastinators, and that's who we're going to have to deal with. We have yep. no concerns about our county recorder's ability to handle this election. Let's be clear about that. The concern is getting the ballots to the recorder in time. That's where the concern is. That's the message I'm telling all my friends and neighbors is that the moment that ballot arrives, vote it right away and send it in. Well, there are a lot of uh, fail safes if you don't do that. You know, you can always drop it off at an early voting location. You can, uh, you know, even on election day, you can drop it off at any polling location. So there, there are alternatives, but if you're not going to, if you don't mail it in immediately, the alternatives become a little bit more inconvenient. Yeah. Well, you know, you can always put on a mask and gloves and, and go vote at a polling place. You know, that's, that's right. that hasn't changed at all. You're really an excellent fundraiser by all measures. And I just wanted to find out what are, what are a couple of the fundraising uh, ways that uh, Democrats can support you? Oh, thanks for asking that. Yeah, we have a few programs going on right now. First of all, most Democrats are familiar with the Udall dinner that we usually have in the spring. And we, we had, we're well on our way to, uh, to selling all our tickets for that event when COVID happened and we had to postpone it. So now it's going to be on October 3rd and it will be a virtual event. So no dinner, um, no in-person socializing, which I really miss, but we have to really do it the safest way possible. So it's going to be a virtual event and Noam Chomsky will still be our keynote speaker. We will be giving the Spirit of Arizona Award to Terry Goddard. And um, so it's still happening. And I want to say this, I am so grateful to all the people and organizations that bought tables and some paid, you know, bought pretty high dollar sponsorships for this event. And they are all saying, keep the money that we get last spring. We still want you to hold this event, even though we're not gonna get a dinner out of it and it's not in person, we still believe in what you're doing and please keep the money. So that has been- Absolutely, I mean, the Democrats of Greater Tucson 
bought yes. a table and uh, when the issue came up, it was like, oh yeah, by all means, keep the money. You know, we're, we're, we're supporting the county party as much as we can. And uh, I'm looking forward to going to the dinner. I'll have my little, my little salad and uh, some sparkling <laughs> water out uh, and I'll make my own dinner. <laughs> yeah, uh, I appreciate that. And you know, I mean, Donna Otham Nation is a high dollar sponsor, uh, UFCW 99, Food Workers Union, um, uh, Steel Workers, they all told us to keep their generous donations, TEP, uh, DGT, um, some LDs, so that's wonderful. It's gonna, it is gonna be fun. It's not gonna be a three hour Zoom, it might be an hour and a half. That, that's about my limit. <laughs> <laughs> And then we do have another fundraiser that we've started and we'll probably finish in the spring. And it is our buy a brick uh, for our patio fundraiser. So we're building a brick patio in front of our headquarters and you can buy a brick for $120 and get your name or organization or your dog's name or any saying you want engraved on the brick. And so we are doing that. It will be nice to have an outdoor space for Pima County Democratic Headquarters because I envision using that space as a petition drop-off spot, a place where people can come sign petitions and that kind of thing. So that's another fundraiser that we've started this year. And I thought that was a great idea. The, the first chance I had, I went out and bought a brick. And uh, I like the whole approach of... Uh, you know, it's very reasonable. You can buy a brick for $120 or, yeah. you know, larger bricks for, for more money. And you can, you know, uh, put your own name down or dedicate it to someone else. Uh, it, it's really a wonderful fundraiser. That's right. And it is related to our platform. Uh, Pima County Democratic Party approved a platform last December with 16 planks. And so we have 16 very large uh, pavers in this patio that can be bought for a higher dollar amount and those represent the 16 planks. So we have sold some of those too. Excellent. Well, it's interested to hear about the staff that are working on online media and so forth, but I understand you have a really robust uh, uh, volunteer network. Uh, I think I read a number something like 30 volunteers. Is that right? Well, yes. And and I have uh, Kat Ripley and Lefty Vaughn in particular to thank for this. Before COVID hit, uh, Lefty Vaughn, who's a great Democrat and she used to be my neighbor, called me and said, I wanna help you organize headquarters. And so her plan was to have three, 10 shifts per week. So Monday through Friday, morning and afternoon, and have three volunteers Per shift. So three times 10, we had 30 volunteers working at headquarters. Uh, and then COVID hit. And so all of these, these volunteers um, started working from home. We sent them home, each with a loose leaf binder of reference materials. And they each have their own shift still. And they call our, our voicemail several times during their shift and respond to calls and uh, route them if they need to. So those, those volunteers, even though they're not at headquarters very much, they are still doing their job. Uh, we are slowly bringing back one volunteer per shift to headquarters during this general election period to make, be available to give out signs and stuff like that. And then we have a whole other group of volunteers working on social media, and, and that kind of thing. We're very fortunate. Um, you know, Mr. Rogers uh, said, look around for helpers whenever you need it and you'll find them. And he's absolutely right. There are plenty of helpers out there in the Yeah, area. yeah. So in closing, Allison, what are uh, some ways that uh, Democrats and, and others can, can support your efforts? Uh, who's from the, who, what number should they call? Where should they go online? Tell us how we can support you. Well, anyone who wants to get involved should go to our website, pimadems.org. 
And there's a phone number there or there's the ability to volunteer there and we can have somebody call you back and figure out what you like to do, what you feel you're good at, and that kind of thing. And find something uh, that fits your skills. Right now, uh, a lot of voters, we are routing them to their LD. As I said, we're in voter engagement mode. And the LDs, the legislative dis districts, are doing that work. And it might involve phone banking or text banking, something like that. I want to tell volunteers who are often afraid of phoning people that, that we don't ask people to call Republicans, for example. We have targeted lists of, a friend, of friendly uh, voters who we just need to remind or give a friendly nudge on getting their ballot in. Um, I can tell you that I've made hundreds and hundreds of calls and can count on one hand the, the unfriendly responses I've received. Most people are very grateful. Often they want to talk for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I would encourage people to be open-minded to making calls because right now, going into this general election season, that's going to be a key part of our voter engagement. Well, I know uh, how effective phone banking can be. I remember uh, in the last election, I was given a list of 500 people to call. And uh, so it, it, it took me a while. And it, it was just great. Whenever you'd connect with somebody and you just have this wonderful conversation and then it'd be like, oh my gosh, I got another 499 people to call. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but your, your experience was overall good too, right? You didn't get Oh, it. yeah. 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 You know, what I, what I always look forward to is like uh, connecting with uh, someone, you know, of the same mindset and, and we would just go off on a tear. And, and overall, that's, that's my experience. It's very positive. People who pick up the phone really don't mind talking on the phone. Right. And we will be, we, you know, of course, independents are going to be very important in this election. Independents are about one third of our registered voters. So uh, we will be reaching out to um, friendly leaning independents, uh, left leaning independents. We can, we can tell who those people are through our van. So again, even when you're calling an independent, it will very likely be a friendly conversation. And people are really grateful for information. So was there any topic I missed? Was there anything else you wanted to cover, Alice? The, our primary, uh, we're very gratified at the turnout we had. It was a record uh, primary turnout uh, in Pima. And for the first time in a long time, Democratic voters uh, outvoted Republicans in the primary, even though there are more registered Republicans. I believe that is because we had some compelling candidates. And some of those candidates brought out voters who were not reliable voters before. I think we're giving people candidates that they can be excited about and for whom they want to vote. I also want to tell anyone who's listening that I am committing that Pima County will provide Joe Biden and Kamala Harris with the margin that they need to win Arizona's 11 electoral votes. Pima County is where this election is going to be won for Democrats. And we are, we have the, we know the work we have to do. Now we just have to do it. So call, call us, go to our website, figure out how you can get involved and help me keep this promise. <laughs> well, I'll be doing all I can to support you. And uh, I want to thank you so much for your time and wish you all the best in all of the efforts for the county party. Thank you, Larry. I've always appreciated all that you do for our county party, for DGT, and for keeping the public informed. You're a wonderful ally, and I appreciate our friendship. Well, feelings totally mutual. So bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.